Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone uh, for coming. We just had a meeting with some community leaders uh, about uh, this as well. Um, we, uh, I think on the handout you have a link to all the information, but uh, this relates uh, to the Freedom of Information Act request. Oh. Sorry, the Freedom of Information Act request that we made uh, now about 140 some days ago. Uh, after 138 days, we finally got a response. Um, this is in re relation to the uh, end of September arrests in the state where 83 people, including 20 in Dane County and five in Rock County, uh, were arrested during a sweep by ICE. Uh, we were told by the president and the agency uh, that this was a sweep uh, of uh, going after people with criminal records. They had a list of 250 names and that 83 of them they apprehended. Uh, from all of that, we had a lot of questions and I was not getting a lot of information from ICE. Uh, finally, after having them into my DC office and not getting answers, uh, we decided to do something unusual for me anyways, my first ever Freedom of Information Act request. I think some of you may have done these before. Um, but the first one I had to do as a member of Congress. And uh, we were very patient, got a letter that they received it, which I think you have a copy of. Then they had asked for an extension. We gave it to them. They asked for another extension. We gave it to them. And then we quit giving extensions because it was getting to be a ridiculous amount of time for some pretty simple information. Um, still got no information. Around uh, January 30th, we showed up at the ICE uh, office unannounced with cameras, um, talked to the alleged liaison, uh, told us that it should have been done. They didn't know why it wasn't. They'll find out. Uh, no communication for several weeks again. Um, finally, on February 13th, um, I think you have a little handout here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, we went outside the ICE office uh, as people were going to work with a missing poster. Uh, and in the missing poster was my FOIA request. Uh, and we asked people as they're going into work if they could please post this by a coffee machine or a water fountain, a uh, bubbler for those of us here, uh, and to try to find out uh, if they could answer this, trying to embarrass them to finally get an answer. Uh, finally, uh, several weeks after that, uh, they did mail something out to us. We received it last Wednesday in the mail, but granted it does take a little longer in a DC office to get stuff. And uh, I'm here to share that information with you today. Um, there's a, a saying that if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, you baffle them with bull. Uh, I'll fin not finish the rest. Uh, I believe that's what's uh, occurred from ICE uh, on this request. Uh, we put the information request in with uh, some simple questions, and I think you have a copy uh, of the questions that we submitted. Um, what we found out uh, are a couple key takeaways. First of all, um, the president and ICE have been claiming that they're deporting dangerous gang members and drug dealers and human traffickers. Uh, According to their own records they provided us with, although they did not actually provide us just a nice list, we actually had to go through, look at next to their name, what the offense was. In some cases, there are codes we could find. There was one code we could not find. Uh, but uh, by looking at that, at least 39 people had no documented criminal history next to their name. We have asked for a follow-up to make sure that's correct. Um, but it does look, uh, when they gave us a list of name and criminal offense and it's an empty box, uh, that's a very large percent of the people that were apprehended. As we know, this has been devastating for the community. People are afraid um, to, to leave homes. They're afraid uh, what's happened. Uh, and many of these people from the, since then, the accounts we've had with people, uh, someone might have been leaving a building where they were looking for someone and they apprehended someone uh, who wasn't on a list. But clearly, when we were told there was a list of 250 names and the 83 people were from that, that was a lie. Uh, many of the people apprehended, uh, we know, had no offenses whatsoever. Uh, and yet they purposely did not give it to us clearly so we wouldn't have that information. Um, secondly, uh, according to the emails, we have asked uh, about uh, law enforcement. We, we saw many comments you'll see in the dump that you have from various 15 counties law enforcement. Uh, interestingly, dated back to August 2nd. Don't forget, this was a September 20th, it's the 21st to the 24th. Going back to August 2nd, they started reaching out to law enforcement everywhere except for Dane County. 
apparently. And uh, very interestingly, um, I'll read you the comments in a second, but uh, Sheriff Mahoney apparently is a radical, in case you didn't know it, um, but I'll share that with you in a second. Uh, they did not give us the information that we asked for um, specifically about Dane County. Uh, they failed to provide uh, pertinent information that we had asked for. Uh, two of the questions were completely disregarded of our six, and four were given incomplete information. And this is my favorite, uh, 294 of the 411 pages uh, were disclosed as fully redacted. They look like this. Um, there's absolutely nothing on the page, but I have 294 of these. Um, apparently, you can't wallpaper a room well with them, but uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't print out the document. I would look at it electronically. It'll make the most sense. Uh, based on this, we are filing an appeal uh, and we are going to try to get more information because we think uh, this was an intentional uh, misuse of what the FOIA request was. Uh, a few other highlights just related to the questions. If you look at our list on the first page again, the first question we asked was about law enforcement. We found that as early as August 2nd, they started communication, however, not with Madison and Dane County. We have a single point of reference to Dane County where they said they left a message at dispatch. Uh, Sheriff Mahoney is here and uh, he can tell you, as he said at the time of the arrest, he got a call before uh, the arrest occurred. They're asking questions about who runs a dispatch. When he asked uh, something about to happen, they said, oh, no, no, this is just for that. Clearly, this is in a time range. They already were contacting other law enforcement telling about that. So um, ICE operated, I think, in the worst way. On two separate occasions, they refer to the radical population in Dane County. Uh, one quote, I know there is a radical population in, Dane, uh, in the Dane area, and no doubt some of this population may bleed over to Rock County area, and specifically Janesville. Uh, that's when they were asking Janesville if they wanted to be part of a press release. And the other quote, uh, this is from ICE officials, both of these. I know there is a radical population in this country in some areas more than others and is extremely hostile towards ICE. Uh, so that was our first question. So we did not get all the information on that. We got partial. The second question is where we asked about the information on the 83 detainees. First of all, I think some of the ICE people have some math issues. There's some questions of 83 or 84 arrests. I'm not going to bring that up. It's not that relevant. But it is relevant that so many people don't have a criminal history and were not on a list of 250 people that we were told that they were trying to apprehend. Uh, Ten of them just had NC next to them under the, the crime committed. We have no idea what that is. I asked the sheriff. He doesn't know what that is. It's some ice thing. Of course, they didn't give us the courtesy of telling us what it was. Um, so, so much for the BS part of their uh, information they provided. When you look at the offenses, six uh, driving under the influence, um, there's a variety of them, traffic offenses. Some were prostitution, one, uh, and some others. But again, what you're not going to see is human trafficking. What you're not going to see is drug dealing. What you're not going to see is MS-13 or gang activity uh, that we hear over and over about. Um, when you look at uh, the information, let's see, it was, uh, that's the main part of that one. On the third question, we asked specifically about um, uh, offering a distribution of privacy releases. So many of the people we wanted to know if we could talk to, they said no, they had to give them a privacy release. We asked, well, did you give them a privacy lease? Was it in English, Spanish? No response whatsoever to that question. Uh, question four, we asked about office space in Madison, nothing. Uh, again, related to that specifically, they did talk about some coordination um, in, in when they did arrests, uh, but there's nothing about office space. I was told when they met with my office, they were 99% sure there was an office in Madison. They got back to us a, a day later or two days later and said, no, there is not an office. Uh, we are quite sure there is an office and they're housed in the U.S. Attorney's Office. That's why we asked the question, and they did not give us that information. Um, the fifth question was about documentation of protocol. I remember, if, if those were, any of you were at the press conference we had at Centro Hispana, uh, when specifically uh, one person said when they were apprehended that they left an underage child at the home uh, alone, we wanted to know what are their procedures, what are the protocols. Uh, that question was completely ignored, including uh, medical and health needs of anyone who was uh, left behind after they'd done an arrest. Uh, and then finally, we asked for the number of people detained by county from this 80, arrest of 83, where they were housed. We wanted to know that. Instead of giving us an answer to that question, they provided me a list of 708 arrests and 690 bookings that were made in the month of September for the entire uh, Chicago area of responsibility. So I have information about Indiana, Illinois, Kansas, Kentucky, Missouri, and Wisconsin, but nothing actually about the question I really asked for. So. Um, Bottom line is, uh, if you can't tell, I'm not real happy with ICE today. Uh, when you get an information uh, request, 
back like this. Uh, I think they intentionally uh, tried to continue to uh, not give us the information. I think they intentionally lied to our local uh, elected officials and our local law enforcement when they came here and did this. And uh, we are going to continue to pursue this uh, in the very best way that we can um, through a FOIA request, through the appropriations process. For those of you who remember when I was on joint finance, you know, we write the budget. That's the same thing in appropriations. We spend the money. Um, some of us uh, understand how to work the appropriations process. And uh, if I was an agency, I don't think I'd be as stupid as they were. Um, but clearly, uh, they are. Uh, so uh, they did this to someone who is an appropriator. And uh, I think we'll have some conversations about that as we're appropriating the Homeland Security budget within ICE. So that's specifically the Freedom of Information Act request. Let me just mention, if I can, three other subjects very, very quickly, and then I'll be glad to take questions on anything. Um, but hopefully uh, uh, on the request through ICE, uh, I think that's the most interesting of the day. Uh, one, the president did release his budget today. Um, if you look, I've got it here. Um, not much to really present other than, because we just got the documents, that uh, it is somewhat similar to past budgets that he's introduced where um, there have been huge cuts to a number of areas where, quite honestly, Democrats and Republicans, and Republicans, when they were in control, um, put money back in because they didn't think his priorities were good. Um, specifically, he has a significant increase in the military budget, but it looks like he did it in an end-around way uh, through an OCO fund. Um, he does have $8.6 billion for the wall that we're going to continue to not give him. Uh, in the budget, and there are some pretty deep cuts to a lot of programs uh, that I would call human services or funds that actually uh, affect people around the country. EPA would get a 31% cut, State Department 23% cut, uh, HUD a 16% cut, Education a 12% cut, Health and Human Services a 12% cut. National Institutes of Health, one of the biggest amounts of federal dollars we get to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, a $4.5 billion cut. Um, None of that's going to last uh, in what we're doing, but I did just want to address that, and I can answer more questions about that. Uh, second of three additional things, I'm very happy to see Milwaukee selected uh, for the national convention. Um, I, I somewhat uh, should not be laughing at some of the comments I saw on social media, but I do find them very true when people say, now the presidential candidate has to come to Wisconsin. Um, but uh, it really is a significant uh, it's significant that they've looked at Wisconsin and they're looking at the upper Midwest as uh, pivotal to the 2020 elections. And uh, I think it's going to be a great location. I think it's going to really send the message that we need to send looking at 2020. And um, I've been happy to be a part of this so far. I'm going to continue to be a part of that process. And the last thing I'll add is just, you know, uh, last week we did pass HR1, the For the People uh, Act, which is a campaign finance elections and ethics uh, review bill. Uh, I had a number of provisions, both in the original bill and the manager's amendment, and a couple of amendments got passed on the floor. Uh, it's a really good bill um, that I think will make it uh, easier for people uh, who are able to, or who should be able to vote, to be able to vote. We'll be disclosing more of the dark money that's involved in the campaigns, and we're going after some ethics issues, specifically things like tax returns, both uh, personal and business, uh, from presidential can uh, the president and the vice president uh, and other measures. But it's a good, strong bill. Uh, it had the support of every single Democrat in the House, which, if you've been following us lately, uh, that's a really significant statement, and it just shows how strong uh, this bill is. So uh, let me just wrap it up with that. I'd be glad to take questions on any subjects. So you, you mentioned Sheriff Mahoney. Have you had discussions with any of the other sheriffs within your district as to how they felt all of this was handled? So Rock County has a new sheriff that was elected last fall, so I have not talked to him specifically about this. Um, we have talked to law enforcement via uh, mass and police law enforcement uh, via the press conference and some stuff back when it originally happened. The mayor has, on several occasions, had additional conversations with me about, uh, most recently he told me when the, they met with uh, people from the Chicago office, they were told, you will not get the information that I have asked for. Um, so we got some of it. Not all of it. Uh, but Sheriff Mahoney is here if you've got questions later. I, I really want to, I guess, give a, a big 
uh, thank you to the sheriff. I mean, the way he has handled this department, I think when it comes to ICE and people uh, who are in this community, valuable members of the community and the harassment that's uh, happened, I think, by ICE. Uh, we saw Milwaukee County, the sheriff recently is gonna follow the lead of what uh, Sheriff Mahoney has done. And uh, I, I appreciate that because, you know, the stories that I hear are heart-wrenching from people uh, who live in this community who are being affected by these actions, who are afraid in some cases to even leave homes because of these actions. You know, this is a, an agency that's running rogue under the direction of this president. Um, he is using it as his police force, his personal uh, police force in order to justify a wall and I find this uh, reprehensible. And when we look at the statistics that we got today, it is clearly not what they told us. When they said they had a list of 250 names and that's who they were going after, clearly uh, that was a lie at that time. And I think they're continuing to lie to us. And uh, we're gonna fight to get the right information. And have, have you had any conversations with other members of the state's delegation about similar activities in their district and similar concerns? No, I've had other members nationally, I can't say, I, I might have, if I did, it was a short conversation. I don't remember an extensive conversation in Wisconsin, but um, I know California recently had to wait a really long time to get some additional information. I think we might be the most aggressive right now in getting information. Those of you who remember the Supermax prison, this is a total flashback to um, how they behaved when we had to get information and have a class action lawsuit. Um, I'm willing to sue over the information I need to get, but I shouldn't have to sue my own government and waste tax dollars to do that. So I'm gonna continue to pursue every other way, but eventually I will be suing in order to get this information as well because we're gonna get to the bottom uh, of the information there. But I've heard from other people who also are unsatisfied in other parts of the country. Uh, they're told one thing and it's a very different story of who's being apprehended. They told us nothing. It was intentional. I mean, there's a little box, and they just had a code or a, a, a fence. And again, the numbers don't match up to what they told us. And then there's the one code we really don't know what is. And even in a simple request like that, we have not got a response back after we've got this. What does that stand for? And uh, they're not sharing. Mark? Yeah, Congressman, you said that, uh, I believe it was your words that, uh, in this case, ICE lied to the local law enforcement officials. Can you clarify what you mean by that? How is it that you draw that? Well, I think, you know, it's a good question for the sheriff. When they reached out to him about the dispatch center, um, I think it's pretty clear uh, they had been planning this for quite a long time and contacting other law enforcement for at least six weeks prior to what had happened. And uh, they clearly didn't. And I think uh, they, you could say misrepresented, uh, I think those of us from Kenosha say lied, um, uh, about what they did. And I think uh, when I, they told us they worked off a list of 250 people that were their targets and they have this many people that aren't on the list that they arrested, uh, that's a lie. Uh, when you tell us uh, that they're going after MS-13 gang members and drug dealers and human traffickers and you come back with people with traffic offenses or no offenses, that's a lie. So yeah, ICE has lied uh, over and over and over again at the direction uh, of this White House. This White House has abused an agency that was created after 9-11 to go after domestic terrorism and now in some communities it's creating the domestic terrorism that it's supposed to be going after. And then just a quick follow-up question. What is the information that you feel like the agency is withholding from your request that it is legally required to provide? All those questions I asked were questions that they should be able to provide. I mean, I understand when you redact a name or an officer's name, I'm not asking for that. In fact, I was very clear, even the offenders, even in the beginning, I wanted to know who they were if I could talk to them. Uh, and they said they had to do the privacy forums. But right now, I just wanted the offenses so I could see how many were on that list of 250. And again, even there, I mean, a proper response is to give you the information you asked for. Instead, they give us a puzzle. And they didn't give us all the pieces. And then we try to put it together from there. Uh, that's a not an acceptable response to a FOIA request. Yes? So they reached out to all these other agencies, county and local law enforcement, but not Madison and Dane County, it seems. Why, why do you believe they did that, less than that? Yeah, I, I iced it intentionally. Um, and when you look at several of the comments where they talk about the radical population, you know, specifically in this area, um, they did it with ill intent. I mean, you, I don't call my, ra my law enforcement radical in this community. Um, I, I'm respectful of them. I think they do a, a tremendous job in this community. And to call them uh, radical and not provide them the information they need. You know, if a vehicle comes up, two vehicles come up to arrest someone, people come out with guns, other people in the community are gonna make phone calls. You could have an incident. 
Uh, and don't forget, this was just a little bit after the incident in the, the employer in Middleton when this happened. Law enforcement has to know what's happening. And if they're not properly notified, you're putting the community at risk. And that's why we wanted the proper communication to our law enforcement. And then to tell the mayor of Madison that he's not going to get the information, and he's the mayor of the city where 20 of the arrests have happened, you know, most, mostly in Madison, that's an abuse. That's an arrogance. Um, and uh, again, it can't be allowed. Um, so we're going to continue to pursue things. Yes? Um, there's a question more just about the relation right now between the legislature and the, the executive. I mean, you know, you're right, I'm used to doing FOIA requests. I remember just about decades ago putting one out and talking to somebody, just having to be talking to the legislature, the state legislature. Goes, well, we don't have to worry about that, of course. We just ask for information. They yeah. have to give it to us. Yeah. And I guess it probably wasn't a law or anything. It was just the understanding that, that you know, these two equal branches of government, you know, the legislature has a wide oversight. You know, they, they ask for something, they gotta, they got to give it. Yeah. It's, just, it's kind of how the system works. Is this something that has been, you know, has this always been this way on the federal level? Is it something no, that's I, been at the decades? You know, I, I've, been this, I've been doing this, I've been doing this for what, 25 years in local, state, and federal government. Um, I had some issues when we had the Supermax prison where I wasn't getting information, but I can't think of times that I've had to do official open records request because you're right, uh, generally an agency would get it for you, especially if you served on a committee that appropriated their funds. No one was that dense. Apparently at the federal level they are. Um, and uh, this is an outrageous case where I have to do this. Just so you know, um, we are introducing either one bill or two separate bills on FOIA requests as well. Right now we're drafting one for members of Congress to get information, uh, one for the press to get information more timely. Um, you know, when we see something like this, this is abusive of what the FOIA law is, and we want to make sure the law is more clear so people can get information. Is there a chance of sending a message saying, you know, this is what the executive thinks of uh, the legislature, we just, we just don't care what you think? Yeah, well, I mean, this is how the president operates, and now when you have agencies operating like that, you know, I guess what's especially frustrating is, you know, ICE was created after 9-11 with the, uh, the purpose of domestic terrorism. And now when you're going after people with traffic offenses or no offenses in Dane County and Rock County, uh, what are you doing to stop the potential for domestic terrorism in this country? At some point, we could have an incident because the president is misusing an agency uh, this extensively. So that's my problem with it. Um, and uh, we're going to make sure, again, that we get this message delivered in every possible way uh, to do that. Yes. I was told, this is, this is hearsay, but hearsay from the mayor, that uh, they have said in the future uh, they will follow the protocol that was previously set up. Previously, uh, one of the assistant chiefs has a phone that's dedicated for ICE to call, carries with them 24-7. So at 3 a.m. if they call him, he wakes up with that special phone. They didn't use that. So intentionally, clearly, they did this end around to the dispatch. Um, so I don't know if they'll operate differently other than the mayor has said in that incidence, they said they would follow the channels that we want for a future action. But again, I don't know. So far, uh, what they just gave me last week gives me no reason to put them in my trust category yet. So um, yeah, I'm still in the trust, but verify maybe. So for Dane County, they contact and dispatch what, during the weekend of the sweep? Right before the first, I think, arrest it was, and the sheriff maybe can be more specific, but if, from what I read, it was before the first one, that was it. So it wasn't even, I would argue that every time they were about to do that, you have to call law enforcement so they know because they make it calls from that particular neighborhood with a question about what's happening. Instead, it was a single incident. Clearly, other agencies from Marathon, Eau Claire, uh, Janesville, et cetera, were contacted some as early as August 2nd for a 21st to the 24th of September raid. So they had clearly six weeks notice already in conversations. That's dangerous. You can't share some information with some law enforcement, but when you have 20 arrests in Dane County alone and you don't, uh, that could really have led to some problematic situations. I don't know what they thought. I don't know if they did think. I don't know why they did what they did. Um, clearly, I'm not getting to that. I'm barely getting the information I asked for. But um, from the you know comments, at least that we saw, where they talked about the radical population here, I'm assuming they think my friend Dave Mahoney is a radical. I've never, uh, I think he's lovable, but I never thought of him as a radical. Uh, this is, 
I think just again a misuse of how you work with law enforcement, especially when you're law enforcement. Yes. No, I have talked to the subcommittee chair. She already asked for the information that I've collected. I'm hoping I might get to sit on the committee and ask questions on it. That's not done too often, but I'm hoping that maybe I can. If not, that she'll either ask or submit uh, officially into the record when the director of ICE comes uh, these questions. But more importantly, I do get a vote on every amendment and everything that goes through the appropriations process for Homeland Security. And uh, I think you can imagine already, I've I'm, I'm got lots of ideas brewing of how we're going to uh, try to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. But I, really, um, I just think it's, it's such an arrogance to do what they did and not giving us the information to provide us pieces of information, but not all the pieces, and then to completely ignore some of the questions and tell us, here's your final response. When we first did the um, the the flyer that said missing, uh, we had some media reach out to them and they said, well, we've already contacted the office twice, but we can't share that information with you because that's between, you know, like us, as if it was some privileged information. I shared the letters with you. They asked for an extension. So again, they even, that was misrepresenting what those letters were about because there was no information conveyed to me about any of my requests. So that's a truly arrogant, I mean, the last time I remember anyone operating like this was the Supermax prison. When, for those of you, you're probably too young to remember all this, but when I was uh, fighting the Supermax prison, um, you know, they would routinely uh, either lie to us or find ways to misrepresent what was going on. And eventually, uh, there was a lawsuit they lost. They had to change their practices. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that with ICE. Yes? No. So uh, in your request, they said they had 411 pages, 294 of those were fully redacted. I assume some were partially redacted as well. Just, just names, uh, but of a, probably, and you'll see it when you look at the dump, a bunch of them are the little privacy things at the end of law enforcement emails. I've got probably dozens of those that take up pages and the pages I did get. So we're talking about over three quarters, or just about three quarters yeah. of the material that was provided to you is redacted in some form. My question is, do you have any thought about whether there's additional material above and beyond that 411 pages that you have not yet received? Well, clear, yeah, clearly, because they didn't address some of my questions at all. Like, honestly, is there a Madison office or not? Where do they operate in Madison in my district? That is a damn simple question. And they're not providing me with any answer whatsoever. I, any, any agency that does that is operating in a rogue manner. I mean, that's not serving the public interest to not tell the elected officials who represent a community uh, something as simple as that. All right, well, thanks everyone. Oh, one more question. And I'm then- sure, you, you mentioned you about anything? Yeah, sure. Oh, great. Um, I, now I set myself up. Is this um, about Nickelback? The <laughs> <laughs> uh, Green New Deal, there was a more detailed yeah. proposal in your face that I saw going around the country. Um, I, I, there's been some, uh, even before that, there's been some pushback I got on the national level from uh, the building trades um, that uh, are, are worried that it's not doing enough to guarantee um, union jobs. Now, looking at it, it seems that this is is a huge push to, for, for infrastructure development that, that could do that. But um, I don't know if you had, if you heard any of this and, and if, you have a, if you have an answer to it. Well, what, what, what will this do for, um, uh, what's, what's the potential for, um, for, for job creation, notably union job creation? Sure. Uh, you know, I think it's extensive, not just for job creation, for union job creation, but for jobs here instead of overseas. You know, most of our money that we spend on energy, I was told at one point it was like something like 98% of the money we spend in Wisconsin leaves Wisconsin. Uh, that includes gasoline, of course. Um, and if you could have more solar, wind, biomass, other things where the jobs are here, the creation of the wind blades are here, uh, the money is staying here, it has a significant impact. Those can all be good family supporting jobs. And uh, one of the things that we've been doing is working with the people on it is to make sure that we recognize any jobs that would transition as you're moving forward in a more green way, that we've got a plan to make sure that folks can uh, get another job uh, that equally is strong and supporting their family. So that's some of the stuff that I've worked on behind it, uh, the scenes on it, and um, 
I, I think that you know more and more we flushed out. We have a special select committee on climate change now. We've got ju committees of jurisdiction taking up climate change legislation, and uh, I think uh, you, you'll see a lot coming in the coming months. So. Anyway, again, thank you everybody, I appreciate it. And uh, the sheriff is here if you have questions, as well as a number of folks from the community that work uh, directly with people who've been affected, uh, including, Aisa, are you still here? All the way back here, who's my guest at the State of the Union. She is an attorney who works with at least, is it five of the individuals? Four, four I'm sorry, four of the individuals that are on that list of 83. Uh, and uh, she can give you more particulars if you have any questions on that. So thank you very much.